Hi everybody, I'm Dan Joseph with MRC TV. Obviously Ebola is all over the news. It's all pretty much anybody can talk about these days. And today I'm joined by Dr. Jane Orian, and she is the Executive Director of the American Associations of Physicians and Surgeons. And uh, we're gonna talk to her a little bit and get her expertise on some of these issues that a lot of people are asking about. Uh, thank you for joining us, appreciate it. Good to be here. Uh, first of all, now, so far, and correct me if I'm saying anything wrong here, we have one contained case of Ebola that we know of in this country. Uh, there are a lot of people panicking. Now, not a lot of panic, but they're talking about it. They're trying to make it into a big deal. It's a big news story. In your view, what kind of threat does Ebola really pose to the United States of America? I think it's a bigger threat than the CDC has so far admitted we say that the threat is contained in Dallas but we haven't seen the end of the incubation period yet two standard deviations of the incubation period is probably 25 days so we need to uh, wait a little while before we say that this case did not have any did not infect anybody else in Dallas are we overreacting are we making more of it based on what you've seen in the media are we making more of it than we should be at this point I don't think so we can hope that this is a very low probability event of, of having an outbreak here, but if it happens, it could be really catastrophic. In West Africa, it is doubling every three weeks. We have no treatment, we have no vaccine, and it is extremely contagious. I think there's a lot of confusion about how people get Ebola. Could you clear that up a little bit for us? You can get Ebola by coming into contact with it on a surface where it remains for dem dem demonstrably for six days. I don't know if that's the outer limit. You can get it by touching or being in contact with the body fluids of a person who has it. The CDC assures us that, that person has to be symptomatic, but I'm not sure how confident we can be as to when transmissibility starts and when symptoms starts. So I think it's really, really important to try to to stop this at the source, which is, means people coming from areas where the epidemic is raging. So, so shaking hands, you, you can get it from shaking somebody's hand. You can. These, the, the virus, it only takes maybe one to ten particles to infect you, and there are receptors for this virus in your skin. Okay, but it's not airborne yet, and that, that would be catastrophic if it did become airborne, is that correct? I, I'm not sure what they mean by airborne. If I mean saliva and other body fluids vomit, go through the air. They don't stop being infectious when they come out of the patient okay. before they land on a surface. So I think that they certainly they recommend wearing masks and goggles, face protection, impermeable gowns if you're dealing with a known infected patient. Based on what you've seen so far, uh, how has the federal government handled this this situation? I think that they've been extremely overconfident. They say it can't happen here. We will contain it with our sophisticated public health infrastructure. But we've had a test, one test, and we flunked it in Dallas. A patient came to the emergency room. He had a history of traveling from Ebola and was sent home without any precautions whatsoever. Should we shut down flights to these countries where Ebola is thriving would that be something you would do if you were if you were the head doctor in charge i think maybe we should follow the example of places like country, other countries in africa who are closing their borders to people coming from that endemic area I, by shutting down flights i don't think we should shut down delivery of supplies or people who are willing to go there to help but having people come on flights who might be infected seems to me to be a really bad idea if you had to guess when I don't want to put you on the spot here, would you say there are more people with Ebola in this country right now that we don't even know about? I think there are others that we're looking at, and there probably are some that we don't even know about. Oh, oh, okay, so I mean, that's that's pretty terrifying. If there's some others we don't even know about, they perhaps don't even know about it either, right? Could well be. Or it could be that they haven't come in on the airplane. They could have crossed over our southern border. There's been so much talk about what, how wonderful it would be to have something like Ebola to wipe out 90% of the population. But what do you I, mean by that? Like, Well, there are people who think that the earth is greatly overpopulated, and there are people who would like to destroy Americans, and they don't mind blowing themselves up with a suicide vest. 
there have been science fiction scenarios and also, you know, real scenarios about it. If you wanted to wage biological warfare, put somebody with smallpox on the airplane. Right. Have them go to Grand Central Station. But you're not saying that this particular situation that we're experiencing right now is, in fact, an attempt at that, an attempt at spreading Ebola all over the United States or all over the world, right? No, the, the man came into Dallas, I think, hoping that he could get more effective treatment right. here. But I'm saying this is a possibility. We don't know that it's happening. But on the other hand, we don't know that it isn't. Right. Okay. Well, last question. Thank you so much for joining with us. I mean, there's so many different things we could ask you. You're obviously very well educated on this subject, and I don't think a lot of Americans are. Um, but in a crisis like this, if it does get out of control, how will the new health care law, Obamacare, play into that? Is that going to hinder our ability to deal with it? Is it just going to stay the same? Will it have no effect at all? How do you see that playing a role, being a factor? Well, I think that Obamacare is driving doctors out of independent practice. It is driving hospitals, especially small rural hospitals, out of business. It is cutting cutting back even further on our surge capacity. Already, we have a shortage even of simple things like intravenous solutions. That hospitals who are doing elective surgery have to plan very carefully to make sure they have enough IV fluids. And these are the only things we can offer to patients with Ebola right now is to try to keep them from dying of dehydration before their body can fight off the virus. So it would hinder, seriously I think, hinder our I think it's going to hinder our ability to practice medicine altogether and certainly will hinder our ability to respond to a crisis. All right. Well, hopefully it doesn't come to that. Uh, Dr. Jane Orion, Executive Director of the American Association of Phys Physicians and Surgeons, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.